Hey guys, welcome to the Rusty Beauty's Garage and our Triumph TR3, 1958 Triumph TR3 behind me. And as you can see, it is tucked a little bit in the corner because we have Nick and his Miata here. But we are back on our Triumph TR3. And if you remember at the end of the previous episode, I was considering whether to work on the battery box here or on the valance and I think the valance is a better option here just because of how the car is located in this area I can work easier on the valance than on the battery box so we're gonna do the battery box in the next video we have completed the whole sides here we have those patches at the bottom we have seals we have everything now the door is not attached and the fenders are not attached here but they were fitted and we know that they fit well we know that the bonnet fits well i still have to take the bonnet out and do some grinding here and there because even after i adjusted it and welded it and ground it it turned out that some of the welds still shrunk because you know we have a cut there cut there cut there cut here cut everywhere so now i still have to take it out and grind those welds because this time i welded it as it is on the car so maybe that's gonna happen in this episode as well but i'm gonna start with the front valance so without further ado let's get crack a lock so the valance as you know we had to make a cut here and move this flange towards the front to create a better gap here with the bonnet because it was going like this in and then that way and it was not great and then we also later we had to make a cut here i literally sliced it from here all the way to somewhere there and lifted this part up and i welded it here too but it's all welded and ground now so it's great so now the only part here is, I don't know why we have this cut here, so we're gonna weld this. There were a few cracks here, which are typical, where this brace ends, that is holding the valance to the bar. I've seen them on multiple TR trees, including on my own valance over there. It's the exact same thing, it has a crack here. But these cracks, now I've taken care of, since we welded here. And here I wanna weld this corner make it solid because that's gonna flex and it's gonna continue cracking it was cracked actually there was a crack going this way so we're gonna weld that and i think yeah on this side there's another crack right here that we want to weld i i think for that well ideally we should put the fender so we can match this curve but here it is pretty clear where this needs to go so we can push it in and weld it and grind it we need to weld and grind these two cracks here i don't know why we have cracks here but we're gonna take care of them as well and then the biggest repair that we need to do is here this flange has been totally bodged here and you see we still have a crack right there inside which allows us <laughs> to reshape this <laughs> So we will see how we're gonna do that. Maybe if I can reach from inside somehow, I don't know, to weld it where it's supposed to be. And then we can just, we can just grind this better and weld it inside or we can cut it completely open. I don't know. We will see what we're gonna do. And the rest is cosmetic. I mean, we need to go everywhere and try with the slapper and a dolly, get rid of all the dents. There's a dent here, there's a, big horizontal dent here all these dents everywhere we're gonna try to smoothen them up with the slapper and dolly but that's after we do all these repairs so that's the plan let's start changing it okay i loosened the valance from the sides here and now i'm gonna go ahead and use my wire wheel to clean it up a little to see what actually i'm dealing with Thank you. 
that's interesting like it is this part is breathing this part is some kind of welding but I think it is stick welding I don't know it's not good at all and this one here doesn't look great so I think I'm just gonna cut it off and I didn't want to go into the front here but looks like I have to maybe that's the best way just cut off completely one part of it and replace the whole flange and this we have extra nuts that we can weld we have to weld another nut here anyways so i'm gonna replace this one even here i don't think this looks great here so we're gonna deal with that separately that this is not even a cage nut <laughs> this is a metal block that they just tapped and created a cage nut is it the same yeah the next one is the same and the next one is a cage nut okay so now let's go and make a flange like this right for that we're gonna use this cut off piece from this fender because it's actually a pretty good metal in this area is pitted that's why we replaced it but here this is a good metal and i already used some of it to repair the wheel wells in the back now let's bend it i know that we have just a little bit here but you saw that i left it wider so we're gonna shorten it later i'm just gonna mark how wide we want it it's how wide we want the flange the rest we're gonna leave inside and we're gonna cut it after now let's figure out the shape we need to curve it this way right and this shape needs to match this shape so we're gonna take the shape from here i'm gonna leave this you need those out to tell me this is the bottom so now we need to make this look like this and actually yeah we're gonna have to shape the bottom as well at the end so we're gonna we're not gonna do it like this we're gonna do it like this we're gonna leave a little bit of room at the bottom for whatever we need to do there so this is the shrinker we're gonna shrink this flange and by shrinking this flange this end is going to become shorter, this is going to remain longer, and it's going to make it curve this way, right? That's the idea. See, it already started shaping. Of course, it needs a lot more. almost there think a little bit more right here think we are exactly where we want to be now here we have a bead you know this is our excuse all the time we have a chrome bead that goes in this gap between the valance and the fender which is gonna hide lots of imperfections but we don't want to rely on that only we want it to be good now i see what happened here also is it also curved this way so we want to make sure that this doesn't happen you see so we're gonna stretch in a few places here now this flange which is gonna make it flat but we're gonna have to curve it again after yeah that's good you see now this distorted this line but we can go and tap it gently with the hammer and bring it back to a nice curve the important part is that this curve here is still where we want it so is it <laughs> let's see it actually opened a little bit too 
So you see, it affected us a little bit, so. Yeah, now it's good. And this is good. Well, I did something really stupid here. I didn't realize that when we cut this piece, it fell apart in two pieces. And now my piece is too short. <laughs> it looked too short to me, but I was like, okay, that's it. I'm like, I have a little bit of a, even allowance here that I can cut down. Turns out I couldn't. Anyway, the shape, doesn't really match here, but it matches here, which is my preference, because we need to make this match this. So when we push it down like this, it matches. The problem is we have to extend this now. Ah. Or make a new one. What's easier, to make a new one or to extend this one? Let's extend this one. Okay, this sticks a little bit far out still, but you can see that it takes the shape as we push it down. So I'm gonna mark it now, and again, we're gonna take this out. <laughs> we're gonna have to take it out to cut it, and then again, we're gonna mount it and we're gonna weld it here on the car so everything matches as it should i also checked the bonnet up there to make sure that it is in the right to make sure that the valance is in the right place right we don't want to weld the valance to this and then find out that the gap there doesn't match so i double checked and it is where it is because it is the valance is actually still mounted to the crossbar between the two inner fenders so the possibility that it have moved somehow was low but still i wanted to make sure so i'm using a scribe here not the sharpie so we can have a more precise line because the sharpie mark sometimes is like an eighth of an inch wide so we want to have a precise line here okay i'll take it out cut it mount it again and I'll bring you back. Okay, so I cut it, bolted it back in, and I started tucking it. But look what happened here now. Initially, I had the same gap everywhere, like here. But I started tucking it from the top down, and the gap started closing more and more and more to a point where now here, the two layers are overlapping. And that's not great. I can cut it and weld it, but I don't want it like that because obviously, it's distorting more and more. So what I'm gonna do is, I don't have access from behind, like it is pretty tight between the valance and the wheel well inside. So I'm gonna remove the bolts now again, and I'm gonna lift it so I can 
planish this. I'm gonna put a dolly behind each and every of these welds and I'm gonna planish it with the hammer to try and relax it. Now, if this was a TIG weld, it was gonna be much easier. With MIG, it's not that easy, but it's still gonna work, I hope. We're gonna be able to planish them and to relax this. And we can finish welding it as it is lifted. We just need to be careful about this split on the side here that we still have that can allow everything to move so we have to estimate where it's gonna be and then we're gonna tack it and then we're gonna test it and if it works well then we're gonna finish welding it if not we might need to cut the tack and weld it again also as everything is mounted now i'm actually gonna mark where the signal lights go because here i believe we're gonna have to cut a hole in the back because this valance is not from this body I think this body is from a wide mount TR3 and because it has the indent here, we, when we remove it, I'll show you. And for this valance, we need to have a hole here, like a round hole for the back of the signal light. So we're gonna have to do that. And here you can see, for example, on the wide mount TR3, where the signal light is a little bit higher and on the small mount it was a little bit lower so that's the difference okay so it's the next day nick is making some progress under his car but yesterday was uh, a little bit chaotic work because he was using the compressed air most of the time and I was only using it when he was taking breaks. So I went and I did other repairs and I came back and I was skipping back and forth. So it was a little bit chaotic for a video. But anyways, I'll show you what I've done so far. So I replaced also this little part here and I installed another uh, cage nut behind. But when I replaced this piece, I just welded the top side and I left these open and along with this cut that we had here and I made another cut here actually because my curve somehow didn't match this curve even though we matched it before but somehow it was distorted so I had between these these two cuts here this cut and this cut I was able to align this curve to here and once this was done then I focused on this part here, I welded everything, I planished it. As you can see, because of all the planishing, it became a little bit wavy. But when I'm able to take the valance off the car, I'm gonna grind the weld in the back and then we're gonna continue planishing here until we have a nice and smooth angle. But in the moments when I had to wait for the holes and I couldn't do anything else here, I came and I planished here a little bit with a dolly and slapper it was pretty distorted so now it's better but we still have dents here and there this whole entire bottom of the valance i don't know what we're gonna do we might need to replace some parts of it but i welded these cracks here i still need to grind them uh, there was a crack here that i welded and i still have to weld right here but i still leave it open for now because this flange here apparently opens and closes as i'm planishing this part there was a pretty big damage here and I straightened it, I planished it out, but as I was planishing and bringing it back to even shape, this flange started to open. So I'm letting it open and go wherever it wants. And when I have the final shape here, I'm gonna push the flange back in. And when I have them exactly where I want them, then I'm gonna weld there and we're gonna grind it. But this area is pretty good now. Like I have a little bit, you see this flower shape here. I can still feel it even, even with my gloves. So we're gonna try to planish it a little bit more, but we're not aiming at perfection. We just wanna get rid of big dents and turn them into small dents so they can be filled with body filler, for example, like here. This is pretty big dent that we don't wanna fill with body filler, right? We wanna straighten that, so yeah. So I'm making some progress. And I think at this point, I, I should take the valance off the car, put it on this stand maybe and just uh, continue work because I need to grind at the back. When we get to this big dent, for example, that's when I'm gonna put you probably on uh, 
time lapse mode and we're gonna see how this is gonna disappear because I'm pretty sure we are able to like this here too this here too the problem is with the bottom of the valance here because you can see this area here we have rust holes you see all this pitted area here I don't know if I should do anything about it here we have holes already anyway let me take it out and uh, we're gonna go from there okay so I took it off I ground down whatever is I don't know how well you can see here but ground down the well from behind and I was able to plunge with the dolly and the slapper most of the waves <laughs> it is of course it's not great but um, it's much better than before isn't it so it's gonna need a little bit of body filler i was never ever able to make a metal repair that doesn't need body filler after that so maybe one day <laughs> but it needs very little anyways so i'm gonna coat this done i'm gonna spray it with uh, primer now I'm gonna come here I already sanded a little bit with my block because that shows you exactly where the imperfections are and I'm gonna try to plunge this a little bit more because I can see there's the high spot here and few low spots of course not spots like areas but I, I won't go crazy with that I'm gonna try a little bit more and then I'm gonna bring you back and we're gonna do this together maybe in a time-lapse mode okay so here I'm eh, kind of happy with this dent repair I haven't done anything underneath yet and I'm thinking I shouldn't because here this flange you can clearly see that it when it was pushed in here when this area was pushed in here the flange was also pushed in down and you see the shape that it has has nothing to do with this shape on this side so obviously this needs to come up and I don't know how that's gonna affect this uh, area here so that's why I'm leaving it open for now to allow the flange to come up and come in its place before I weld this I'm not really sure how this is gonna go up <laughs> it is like really tricky I'm afraid that when this line here got pushed in the flange got stretched otherwise it wouldn't be able to take this shape right so maybe this needs to be shrunk again the only way in this situation to shrink it is to cut a v-shape and push it in and that's gonna raise it up but i don't know maybe i'll see maybe i'm gonna make a cut at some point and just gonna leave it like that so when i'm planishing this dent out this flange is not going to be holding it in the wrong place you know what i mean so maybe i'm going to make a cut or maybe even two but i'm going to start planishing this out for now without the cuts maybe i'm going to make it at some point but you can clearly see where the damage is right this whole entire area needs to come out so let's see if we can do that and like i said i'm going to put you on a uh, time lapse mode because i find it amusing actually to see how the whole piece of metal is moving up at normal speed you don't see that but on time lapse you can see it literally moving so let's get crack on okay. Okay, so it's about an hour later and you saw how the dent came out. Pretty happy with that, but that was the easy part to pull out the dent. Uh, now we have to fix the general shape here. We can always make it smooth. The problem is that the general shape is not correct. Only here there's still a little bit I can feel the, the dent, but here it is now pretty smooth i can't tell where the line was 
The problem is though, the whole thing goes down here and then goes up. So we still need to push. I was resisting the urge to make more cuts, but at some point I made two more cuts and that allowed me to push this area up. But now this, even though here we have a high spot, this is in general, it's low. You can see from here, I guess. You see right here, this is low. It still needs to go up, but I think I'm gonna have to make another cut here. And uh, I think that's where we should aim. Make this line straight first, weld all these cuts, and then continue with the rest. Which I also figured out here, this is not the correct shape here. I have this curve, then I have an angle here, and then I have pretty flat area here. But this area shouldn't be flat. It's not flat, it's a little bit curved, but it needs to have much bigger curve because I came and I looked at my my valance here. Luckily, I have a small mount valance here to look at and you see how this area here almost doesn't have a flat spot. There's no corner here, everything is round. I have the center of the valance on that one. I have it like here. I have pretty flat spot and curve, big curve here. here. Okay, I made one more cut here and I was able to actually, what I did was I took this clamp, clamped it like that and then pushed and I was able to raise the areas that I think that need to go higher and I think we have a pretty good line here now and here and um, now I'm just gonna weld them I'm gonna grind them later because we might need to cut them again <laughs> we never know uh, this edge here also looks too sharp we don't want it that sharp we want it round like here but it became sharp because we hammered here on top so I'm gonna weld this and then with round dolly underneath and with proper shapes I'm gonna try to give it again the round shape everywhere and here especially because how it is right now I don't like it That was a big challenge, but I think we have a pretty good result. I mean, I mean, still, again, it's gonna require some body filler. We can probably make it perfect. We can probably make it perfect, but it's gonna take like another five, six, seven hours. I don't know how long. And uh, I don't think it's worth for what it is. Like body filler is for that, to fill uneven parts. I ended up, grinding my dollies like whenever i needed a different shape i would just take the grinder and grind so i grind this edge this edge it's not perfect you see the casting is not great wherever i could but i think now it is perfect i mean the flange looks good this corner looks good i welded this part to here this now has this nice shape i don't know if you can see it like that but it is not flat anymore it becomes flatter as it goes to the sides here you can't really see it actually let me paint it quickly so we can see it better maybe all right this is what i'm talking about so you see the reflection it's not perfect i mean even in this area here there was uh, this dent here translated into there there was a big part that ra got raised so even that i was able to plunge nicely i think i'm actually really proud of this repair <laughs> so we're gonna have to continue here like here there's more dents here and here 
And uh, I think we're gonna leave this part for another video because it's gonna be pretty big repair. I still don't even know what I'm gonna do, so I'm gonna leave it for after my vacation. Um, when I come back, hopefully in seven days, I'm gonna come up with a solution for here, which I'm pretty sure it's gonna end up being <laughs> cutting it off and making a new bottom. I don't know, we will see. This now is pretty good here. Anyways, I'm happy. I'm really happy with that. So I think we're gonna put an end to this video here. And this thing is really heavy. I can't hold it for a long time like that. So thank you guys for watching. Thanks for commenting, subscribing, sharing, and supporting the channel. And I'll see you in the next one. Oh my God. Thank you guys. See you in the next one. Bye.